Hey everyone, today we'll be taking you through the weekly news roundup of relevant changes in World of Warcraft. As we all know, the pre-patch will finally be hitting us soon, on the 13th for NA Realms and on the 14th for EU. You can check out this WoWhead post for a ton of information, including all class changes and other new information. One recent change is making only max level characters able to interact with the Black Market Auction House. This will mainly affect players moving gold to other realms in order to use the Black Market Auction House with ease. Another big talking point in the community is how drinking water works. It will regenerate slower as you begin drinking, increasing as you continue to drink. This results in drinking being less effective during the first seconds of drinking, but later on being roughly the same as it was before. It's looking like it could be a bit of a nerf to healers constantly going for a few seconds of drinking in arena games. But what do you guys think? Are you happy to see drink changes like this in PvP? Feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Following the pre-patch, Blizzard have created a guide explaining the major changes coming with the expansion, as well as how to prepare for before and during the pre-patch that's about to hit. We will be losing the Corruption and Essence system, as well as a wide variety of changes to every class. There will be a level squish resulting in level 120 players leveling down to 50 and Shadowlands having a max level of 60. Customization features will also have much more variety, including the option to change genders for free. A questline story will also launch during the pre-patch, being available during the patch dates and before Shadowlands hits. Last but not least, this means that eventually this expansion's raiding mounts that drop from end bosses will also become more difficult to obtain as Shadowlands hits. Yes, that's right, even though the pre-patch is coming, these mythic tier raid mounts will continue to have a 100% drop rate during the pre-patch until the beginning of Shadowlands. There are only two mounts that you'll need to be worried about here if you are an avid mount collector. One is the Glacial Tidestorm from Jaina Proudmoore in the Battle of Dazar Allure. The other is Nihilotha Allseer dropped from Nizoth in the Nihilotha Raid. Again, in the pre-patch, these will continue to have a 100% drop in Mythic difficulty only. All right, moving on to Shadowlands content. On the beta, a trinket vendor has been implemented, giving us access to all of the PvE trinkets available from world quests, dungeons, and raids. This allows us to experiment with these trinkets in arena games and see how good they are in comparison to the PvP trinkets. And there are a few for all classes that are either powerful or even overpowered, which could drastically change the game due to their strength. For melee damage trinkets, the two best trinkets are File of Putrefaction and Skulker's Wing. File of Putrefaction is a passive trinket, applying a nature dot on your target constantly as long as you have uptime stacking three times. This trinket can deal incredible amounts of extra damage with a high uptime, making it powerful in short or long games. It's basically performing as well as having multiple gushing wounds on your gear with only the cost being one trinket slot which is why we think it is in an overpowered state as of now. Since this trinket is easily accessible at high item levels as it's a dungeon drop, this would definitely affect PvP. Skulker's Wing is another overpowered trinket in the form of absurd instantaneous damage on a 1.5 minute CD. Believe it or not, the trinket is basically a buffed version of the Drestagath trinkets from BFA. Yes, that's right, a stronger version of the Drestagath trinket. I imagine some of you are dreading seeing double melee cleaves once again using trinkets like these in conjunction with each other to one-shot a target or force powerful defensive cooldowns immediately. If you're wondering or not quite sure just how powerful this combo was in BFA, here's a showcasing of the trinkets in action. Gulker's Wing will also be available from the raid, making it a big problem in PvP due to how overpowered and easily accessible it is. Casters, on the other hand, have not gotten as overpowered of trinkets compared to melee, but they still have a very strong one being Dreadfire Vessel. It deals a ton of burst damage still and is definitely problematic as it's still powerful and accessible from the raid, making it easy to get high item level versions of the item. Tank trinkets have also made a comeback to PvP in the form of Beating Abomination Core as well as Dreamer's Mending. Beating Abomination Core is a passive trinket that constantly gives you extra healing throughout the game. It gives a considerable amount of extra self-healing comparable to the Diamond Lace Refracting Prism in BFA. It can be hugely beneficial to the survival of melee classes, making it much more difficult to kill them, especially with Dot Pressure. This trinket will be less of a problem though as it's a world quest drop. 
making it harder to achieve high item level versions of the trinket. However, it still could be overpowered given the nature of the item, even at lower eye levels. Dreamer's Mending is pretty much a cheap death trinket. When brought to 20% health, it will heal you for a considerable amount, most likely allowing you to escape from death on a two minute CD. Trinkets like these can be brutal, denying the enemy team a likely kill, giving a ton of extra healing on a low cooldown that will again make players difficult to take down. Think of having to deal with a safeguard trinket that has a 50% CD, but provides no option to be able to purge its healing effect. Both of these effects make it much more powerful. Although both of these trinkets seem incredibly powerful, it also seems like these will only be available via world questing, making it, again, difficult to obtain high item level versions of the item. For healers, we've really only got one pretty strong trinket as well in the form of Mana Bound Mirror. This basically gives quite a bunch of extra healing with a low on use CD. Similar to the Voodoo Trinket in BFA, this trinket could be used while you are in a lockout, or simply need an extra amount of healing before being stuck in CC. This is another easy to get trinket as it drops in the new raid coming out in Shadowlands. So, what do you guys think of these trinkets coming out and being used in Arena? Personally, I've never been a fan of PvE trinkets having so much power in PvP instances. Trinkets having a ton of power can drastically change the playstyle of the game, as you may need to constantly play around how the enemy team uses their PvE trinkets. We've also seen how OP trinkets have affected the game in BFA. Some trinkets can completely change the playstyle of a game and literally sway some matchups in your favor. While trinkets should be strong, they shouldn't be too strong, and PvP trinkets should be more optimal in PvP instances. The power of these PvE trinkets are also completely nullifying the PvP trinket 2 set bonus. It is currently far superior to have one, if not two, PvE trinkets instead at the moment. All right, now that we've finally finished rambling about trinkets, we can look into other changes, including the Maw, Conduits, and Covenant Balance. With the Maw being out on the beta for some time, Blizzard has been receiving feedback on this, pretty much saying that it sucks. Although Blizzard also agrees and is looking to improve on the impact the Maw has. Blizzard will also be changing the Conduit system, allowing it more flexibility. The main changes here are that you will gain one conduit charge every day, up to a maximum of 10. This means that you will be able to make seven conduit changes a week if you want, as well as if you want to replace your entire tree of choices, it will cost you four conduit energy. There will be upcoming class and covenant tuning as well. This will be nice to see when it happens as some classes seem to benefit a lot more with certain covenants compared to others. Moving on to soulbinds, they have changed the layout of soulbind trees. The biggest change here is that all Soulbind trees will now have only two potency conduit sockets instead of three. Certain classes with strong spec-specific conduits will basically be less effective, having to trade a potency slot for an endurance conduit slot. Here is an example, comparing the Kyrian Pelagos tree with what it previously looked like. And here's what it will look like now. These tree changes are implemented across the board with every Soulbind tree. All right, moving on to the more juicy stuff, a new recent beta build has been implemented. This build resulted in a ton of legendary nerfs, among other things. Looking at the most relevant legendary nerfs, Frost Death Knights will be sad, seeing both Kul'Tira's favor and Rage of the Frozen Champion being nerfed quite heavily. However, that being said, Biting Cold did actually receive a buff. For Frost Mages, Cold Front and Freezing Winds also got hit with nerfs as well. Kiefer's Skyreach for Monks has also been changed, giving it extra crit chance, but nerfing the uptime per target. This feels like an overall nerf. Last but not least, we see rogues having big changes to their legendaries. Guile Charm receives a big nerf in the damage it deals, as well as the effect being shorter. Akari's Soul Fragment is certainly the biggest nerf on legendaries that we have seen. Originally being nerfed from 100% to 50% damage, it has once again been hit with a nerf, reducing it to 15% effectiveness. Even though the legendaries have been getting hit with nerfs, Blizzard have stated that they will continue tuning the power of legendary items. Most likely this means that they will be buffing legendaries in an upcoming build, so we expect to see more changes to legendaries too. Some of these nerfs were 100% needed though. For instance, the nerf to Akari's Soul Fragment, as without these nerfs, it was severely broken. So. How do you all feel about these legendary changes? Do you want legendary items to be weaker or stronger in PvP scenarios? Most class changes implemented weren't too big. The biggest one here is Hunter's Mark, making it no longer part of your damage rotation. Before these changes, it was basically an annoying button that you had to press. Now that its cooldown is removed, it makes it better for PvP as well as keeping Hunters happy. As for Covenant changes, Flagellation for Rogue seems to have been buffed, making it a more desirable choice. And Paladins are going to be left confused with their latest conduit change to Righteous Might. Necro Lords was recently buffed, making it the strongest offensive pick for Paladins. 
Now that Righteous Might has been nerfed though, it brings this covenant back down once again. Next, let's take a look at the PTR class changes that are expected to come live as the pre-patch hits next week. Note that these changes are not actually live on the beta and are instead going straight onto the live servers next week. Balanced Druids will no longer live in misery, seeing as they will be receiving buffs to all their damage as well as buffing their talents Soul of the Forest and Star-Lord. Holy Priest will also be seeing buffs across all of their healing, keeping them happy as well. For Disc Priests though, this remains another story as they change how Schism works. It deals more initial damage, but drastically nerfs the debuff on the target, resulting in quite a significant nerf. Monks will be seeing changes to Fortify and Brew, reducing its cooldown for all specs. For Windwalker and Mistweaver, it will now be a 4 minute CD, whereas for Brewmaster, it will be a 6 minute CD. Speaking of reduced cooldowns, Holy Paladin's Holy Shock will be changed from a 9 second cooldown to a 7.5 second one, resulting in a small buff. We've also seen major nerfs to Frost DKs, potentially gutting the spec before it even hits live servers. Time will tell if Two-Handed Frost will remain the go-to spec for DKs in PvP, but these changes definitely look quite large. On the flip side, Feral Druids have received some much-needed damage buffs, which should bring them more in line with some of the other melee. And lastly, Fire Mages have also seen a few damage buffs. Given that they were certainly lagging behind the other mage specs, this is a welcome change and could see a return to Fire Mages as the most competitive mage spec, although this also remains to be seen. Now there has also been some recent news of Covenant abilities being disabled outside of Shadowlands content. You're not though, as this Covenant change has now been reverted. To be clear, if this were to go into effect, Covenants would still have been usable in all Shadowlands content, including arenas and battlegrounds. However, it wouldn't have worked in any zones outside of Shadowlands and any previous expansion activities, such as Island Expeditions. Now, they've reverted this change though, as you can see why in this Blizzard post. Alright, that covers all things retail, leading us into WoW Classic news. On the PTR, we will finally see the release of Naxxramas, which will mean Phase 6 will be coming out soon. This is quite a nostalgic raid, which I'm sure Classic WoW fans will be looking forward to greatly. There's also been a TBC beta leak on Twitter as we can see here, stating that there's plans for a TBC beta launch in March 2021. Alright, that's going to do it for our weekly news here at Skillcap. Make sure to add any comments down below and give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.